Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last season of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and look at that beautiful nation we have here. Gross Africa, the show, like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, it warms my heart seeing such a big, thick African nation here. I'm excited to see what will happen, but right now, I'm a little worried at the same time, because we have stabilized the room. Des, Reichstadt. So, some mission... British worried by Colonial Velvata Muzo's method. Urgent from the desk of the deputy to the Colonial Velvata von Zambia. It is in the opinion of the officers of the Colonial Velvata that the present governing situation in the Zambia region presents a potential risk to the security and integrity of the Reichstag. The relative autonomy granted to the English populations in Zambia has produced a society in which natives and white settlers can, for the most part, accommodate one another. However, this situation has also produced with the potential for rebel activity, increasing socialist aligned movements which have demonstrated past ties to the ANC. Such a situation is unacceptable. However, the appointment of Hans Mosler or Mosler to the position of Colo Colonial Vavalta, Paul's annexation has to the English upended the, the careful balance among the people of Zambia. One recent incident which has become a particular flashpoint of tension was the arrest and summary execution of three notable black merchants in the Cheston neighborhood of Lusanka for suspected guerrilla ties. An open letter written by Michael Grigg, an Englishman, militia officer, and prominent member of the settler community, has recorded that the colonial Bavata's regime can take a lighter touch with Zambia to lower tensions and encourage free economic activity. Grigg's letter was accompanied by a petition whose list of signatories was reportedly growing by the day. Is it advised that the central government address these concerns as soon as is reasonably practical? And goes the right, Moza should be in charge. Look at the situation in Zambia has worsened and improved, or we must have law and order in Africa. Um, Angles are right. Moza, Moza should be in charge. Hmm. Well, I mean, this one goes down and up. We lose some political power, but this one looks just bad overall. Uh. Anglos are right. Well, I mean, we see over here, Zambia is uneasy, 57%, and Uganda is collapsing, which is not good. And we're only stage one, and we only get to stage three if possible, so. Uh, I put soldiers in Quillamane just in case. I want to put soldiers in Uganda just in case, maybe. And I'm putting some soldiers in Windhoek, so we'll see what happens. We're acceptable in Cameroon, Congo, Mozambique, as well as Rwanda, Urundi, so we'll see what happens. Actually, is it Uruguay up? Uganda up here? That's Rwanda. Uh, where's Uganda? I'm sorry, I don't know my African geography as well as I probably should. Let's see, Uganda. Lugansk? No, it's not Uganda. But, you know what, just go, we'll do the angle to the right. Cool, so, I had to look this up a little bit. And some people know, a lot of people haven't reported on this, but apparently you should rush down the left side of the focus tree first. Because even if you go down here, it's not bad. And we do have a couple of comments to go through as well. So, someone said I should finish the focus tree with the uh, South Africans. You know, with the South African War before we finish the war with them. So, I should have, like, done this entire tree. Because you never know what might happen. And we love the Burgundian system down here. Holy crap, I love it. So, we'll see what happens. Also, I was told that... Ooh, okay, GGR, good luck. That we should keep this open. Oh, that's getting worse. Oh, no. Um, we should probably keep this open just to see if there have any decisions for stability. So, we can spend political power. We can spend command power on certain areas. We get one a day. Nice. So, we'll do that. But... Urgent from the desk of the colonial Velvata des Congos Alto Foschna. The plan to fully Aryanized Africa continues. However, we continue to encounter difficulty. Most of said difficulty comes from the mercenaries from whom the former Central African Reichskommissar allowed free reign over the territory. Now that we are no longer giving them work, they are turning their guns on us. Our SS battalions can doubtlessly handle an assortment of mongrel war dogs off the leash. Unfortunately, many of them have fallen in with the native chieftains and rebel bands, and as a result, the savages have been getting increasingly hard to deal with. Compounding our issues is that many of the unto-mentioned former Reichskommissar Müller treasonously elevated to the administrative positions and even to the SS are still at large. We have reason to suspect, like the mercenaries, they are lending their skills to native terrorist groups. Losses among our SS divisions are reaching critical levels, especially around the Congo Dam. Reinforcements are desperately needed at the dam as we have reason to suspect that it is the primary target for the native saboteurs. The cracks are spreading and send reinforcements to guard the dam. Let's see, Congo. Eh? Yeah. Des Congo is 74%. And now it's 76.9%. Now it's 76.8%. Collapsing. Oh, I don't like collapsing, please. I think Uganda's up here somewhere. I don't know, this is Kenya. This is Kenya region. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know my African geography that well. I love cleansing, though. Things are just getting slightly better. So, on the rest in Uganda. Transcript of document received at 1 o'clock, 23rd of November, 1966, top secret. For Shah Hitler, Hans Hutik, Masha Hitler, I've received distressing news. 
The garrison situation in Uganda region were unable to respond to repeated communication attempts, all the while gunshots and explosions were heard in the background. This has led many, including myself, to believe one of our greatest fears, that dissidents have managed to overthrow the local forces, uh, has been realized. As you read this notice right now, said rebels will be causing chaos, sabotaging supply lines, and destroying infrastructure, preventing us from deploying large amounts of ground forces to suppress their open active defiance. This group known as MN, by our intelligence, have forced our hand, requiring us to divert our efforts to quelling the racket rather than pursuing our intended objectives. With that being said, however, we cannot neglect them. Lest they grow further out of control and manage to secure a firm grip on their ill-gained territories, got eventually declaring themselves as a completely separate entity. With all of that in mind, ho we hope this report reaches you, Hehuteg, with and with swiftness. May you succeed su successfully deal with the resistance. Now I'm talking a little bit slower here, but Hehuteg, Deputy Colonial Vebalta Otto Rimer Vadamt. I'm reading that somewhat slowly so I can figure out where Uganda is, which I think it... Oh, found it. It's up here. Uh, okay, it's up there. Really? Uganda's all up here. So, okay, that makes sense then. Um, I'm not sure we can really do anything about that, but... Oh, let's see. Ah, oh, here we go. So we have the decisions about stuff collapsing. Um, command power when selected. Okay, it's 3.3%. If we spend political power up here, aid the Colonia of Alvata. Um... We could try it. We don't have that much political power to spend, really. Act in Uganda. There's a local situation in Uganda is stable enough. Above 50%. You have at least six divisions in one of the states surrounding Uganda. Oh, uh, we could try it. It's up to 8%. We are rushing divisions up there, so... You guys are over there. You guys... You're not going to be fast enough. Oh, yeah, we're not going to be fast enough. That was a waste of political power. Oh, no. <laughs> and the Boer Republic isn't doing very well, either. So, Go figure. The death of Rolf Steiner. Another morning in Quillemaine brought another flurry of papers to the office of Rex Komasahutig. Coffee in hand, Africa's conqueror strode towards his desk, noticing the envelope on top of the pile, stamped urgent. From the desk of the colony of Avalta, Desk Congo's Alta Fushina. It seems someone had finally managed to decipher one of the hunting maps that worthless buffoon Miller had scribbled out with the Reich's time and resources, and had found Rolf Steiner camping with a band of mercenaries near Topi Head. Steiner had been, in Hutig's mind, the one official in Africa outside his command who was actually worthy of his rank. Towards the end of the South African War, Steiner had reached out to Hutig, seeking to help replace the hot air filled suit in Leopoldville with someone who at least understood that the post of the Reich's commissar meant more than never-ending Hayao Safari, and it was regrettable that a man with such a bright future of service ahead of him had to piss it all away out of jealousy when Otto Fischner was named Colonial Valvata des Congos instead of him. Putting aside vain thoughts of what could have been, Alex Komasar tapped out his reply, find, out their find their water supply and infect it with malaria. Ah, good! Congo's gonna get better. Well, let's help. Hey, it went down by point one. Not too bad. How is the uh, economy doing? It's going okay. It's definitely going okay. I love cleansing, and then this local situation will prove. Track the resistance. Sure, that one. All across Africa, there are countless small native movements seeking to destroy a civil civilizing project for the continent. They scurry in the city slums, roaming the savanna, talk, stalk their prey in the jungle. No more. The SS will have to track the whereabouts of every single one of them. They will leave no stone unturned in all of Africa, and only when the last degenerate rebel will bleed to death can we assume control over the dark continent. Local mercenary leader Jean Schramm disappears. Urgent. From the desk of the colonial Vavata Des Congos Otto Fischner. Jean Schramm has Shimo managed to escape the surveillance net we set up. He's not been e seen at any of the usual social clubs he tends, nor has he been observed leaving his home in a week. A search of his house also revealed nothing to indicate where he may have gone, and a few of my men got killed thanks to the booby traps the snake left behind. We suspect that Schramm has disappeared into the jungle to organize the Belgian mercenaries. Speaking candidly, this does not bode very well. During Müller's administration, the Belgian mercenaries had a rep reputation as the most brutal fighters in Central Africa, butchering whole villages without a moment's hesitation if they suspected a single rebel of hiding there. They've only gotten more ferocious since we've taken over, stalking through the jungle and sadistically slaughtering anyone who can get their hands on German, Anglo, French, or native. As Schramm has taken to honing, honing the Belgians' fury with his organizational talents, together they may form the greatest threat our administration has yet seen. We urgently request that more SS units be deployed to the Congo. As soon as possible, mon dieu. Also, to let you know, if things go really badly, I will, like, fade and fade out and kind of go back and give myself more political power since, as someone said in the comments from yesterday's video, doing investigations was a complete and utter waste of time because it did nothing for us and we invested way too much political power, which we could have saved because we can stockpile 2,000 political power max. So I might just go back and see what happens, but we'll see how far we get first, but we must be finishing the job. The drill grounds outside Quillemay were packed with soldiers. It was an early morning, but the sky was pitch dark due to the monsoon clouds. The only source of light was the floodlights shining their harsh white glare towards the fields, but the soldiers in the fields weren't unfazed at all, even as the rain poured all over their uniforms, every single one of them standing tall and firm, though. Each one of these soldiers were the finest examples of Aryan supremacy. The cream of the crop of the German forces in Africa, the African SS. 
And on the stage under the Nazi flag stood the man who commanded over them, Hans Daddy Hutte, Stahetler of Africa. How long did I have to wait for this moment, thought Hutig, as he was giving an impassioned speech to his troops. But now I have the power to make things right. I can restore order to this gosh darn continent. As he finished his speech, a single hail boomed throughout the air. Thousands of voices in unison over a sea of Nazi salutes. The SS will now begin the deployment over African countryside. And woe to anyone unlucky not to come into the crosshairs. United in purpose. I really hope that we can do really, really well here. Like, maybe even the, in the future. That, uh... You know what, screw it, I'm, I'm going to spend more PP. We might be able to get this a little bit better, actually. Um... Like, Germany, like, once Bormann wins the Civil War, like, he can send, like, a whole bunch more boys down here. Like, even though I have played as Bormann at the time of this recording, I would love to see if we could just send a lot of degenerate, like, people from Germany into Africa. I would love to see that. I love colonizing. I have a problem. Run through the jungle. Report from the desk of the same dude. No, no, it's not. Colonel Bevata des Angola Erich Mosfeld. Anti-partisan activities continue apace, although recently dissidents have increased their activity in response to perceived slights by the colonial administration. Activity of, noted, of note recruits, includes a raid on an airfield in southern Namib province. The airfield has been minimally staffed following the conclusion of the South African War, mainly housing disused and damaged planes and radio equipment with which contact was maintained with local governments in West Africa. The base was found put to the torch by a patrolling SS unit, with hangars and administration buildings raised and a large quantity of explosives detonated on the runway to deny its further use. It is the opinion of this administration that the attackers targeted the facility to acquire aviation equipment, perhaps to establish contact with their own, with the local government, and acquire material support from outside the Reichstag. Particular attention should be paid to any unauthorized aircraft attempting to leave our airspace, and reconnaissance performed to determine the existence of any airframes in position of uh, partisan groups. We're going to lose even more political power. Um... I don't want to lose anybody, man. So it's Angola. Well, it's 59% now. We need to get more... Oh, bad words. Maybe we should just let Uganda go. Oh, God, things are going down. Every every single day, things are going down. Black market available. Okay, cool. There you go. We got up to 21% here in Uganda. Anywhere else we can spend some command power? I don't mind spending command power, even though we get 0.32 every day. Oh, God, look, good Lord, that's not enough. Oh, man. We got to check the resistance. And we gotta spend, 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 spend on civilians so we can get more political power. Oh boy. It's just not very good, I'd say. Not very good. Oh, there we go. 25%? Hey, minus 0%. That's not possible, but okay. Oh god, everything is. Only the Congo is okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna stay in the Congo if, as long as we can. Royal uh, Hubris. A report from the desk of Colonel Bevata Cote France. As you know, I sent an invitation to Kigali V. The newly crowned king of Rwanda to meet me in the palace. This was done for obvious reasons. I wished to know him better and assure him our superiority. Unexpectedly, he refused. He sent me a short letter attached to his report, dealing said, uh, detailing said refusal. In it, he expressed his thanks for our congratulations and told us that he would be refusing any of our offers. I personally do not know the exact reasons why he refused. Rebel against, uh, perhaps he's being held captive. Regardless of why he's chosen to rebel against us, he is deep within Uganda, and we have no information on his whereabouts. We do not have any means to punish him. There are still actions we can take to provo provoke his forces. I personally ordered reprisals and take place. A take place across Uwanda, Rwanda. One way or another, we will draw his attention and we will see how long it takes for him to respond. Hey, more uh, this stuff. Cool. Not bad. Even though at this point, I don't think the land auction is going to be super important for us to keep an eye on. Okay, you guys, hurry up. Go. What? Go. Get in there. Seriously. Troops may not enter. Oh, crap. That's not good. Um. Mm, picking up the trail. Crap. So, on his good days, Wilhelm felt like a warrior for all the Aryan race, hoping to ensure that the other peoples would not overwhelm the master race. On those days, he did his job with gusto. After all, he knew that his job, however tedious, could prove vital to the stability of German rule in Africa, especially after Hutik had taken control. Yet, today was not one of those days, and Wilhelm lost or felt lost in a sea of questions and paperwork. He had not found much success. Amilcar da Cruz, Wilhelm called in his next guest, it was one of, the, one of Portuguese men. He imagined the man's father had stayed during the German conquest of Angola for whatever reason. The man sat as Wilhelm fiddled with his paperwork. Have you seen this man at any time in the last two weeks? He held up a picture of an African man clad in SS clothing. There was another person in, in, intimately familiar to Wilhelm, but he did not need to be. The Portuguese man squinted at the picture for a moment. Wilhelm was about to move to the next picture before the man nodded. Yes, I think... Wilhelm was taken aback. Perhaps they would get somewhere today. He checked a box of papers, scanning for the next question that he was meant to ask. Where exactly did you see this man? 
Uh, let's empty the house first. The fact that the degeneracy that is currently corrupting our nation, every home must be searched. Every suspect, no matter how tenuous or tenuous his association with the terrorists, should be incarcerated. Even the terrorists must have a place to rest, and the African continent is full of huts and shacks where the natives coordinate their attacks. There might be also sympathizers who house the terrorists. These degenerates are just as guilty as the criminals they abet. Conducting searches in every house will kill two birds with the same exact stone. Send garrison supplies to Uganda. Wait, hold on, I can send... Oh, I can do this one, yeah. I'm, it's worth... Oh, look at that. Not bad. I love the stability stuff here. Oh, this is going to end in just everyone going crazy. The trial of the traitors. The Leopold Bell Court House was an exemplar of Spartanist design principles. The chosen guests filled into a large square room and took their seats in folding chairs. A hot Congo sun overcame the court's feeble... Oh, my bad. I forgot. I thought I uh, paused it. Uh... Uh, the hot Congo sun overcame the court's feeble air conditioning, and the gas sweat soon soaked the collars of the dark woolen uniforms, despite the breeze coming through the open air window and windows and doors. All at the front of the courtroom stood the sole extravagance the design of the budget would allow, an enormous judge's bench built of oak imported directly from the Fatherland. Above the judge's chair was a huge photo of the Rex Komasa Hans Hutik, Master of Africa, flanked on either side by the striking black banners of the gross African show Reichstag, and the crown by a bronze Reichsadler, whose wings spanned most of the bench. The display combined to impress upon both the accused and the observers the invincibility of Aryan justice. Doubtless, the TV cameras being set up around the room would get plenty of footage at that bench. As the cameras went live, the accused traitors, ex Zentral African generals Hugh von Open and Gerd von Blotnitz, were brought before the bench looking appropriately disheveled. Or disheveled. During the trial, everyone played their assigned roles to perfection. The prosecutor ruthlessly questioned the accused, who provided one confession after another. Yes. They supplied guns to the native rebels. Yes. They allowed Untermenschen to defile the hollowed ranks of the SS. Yes. They allowed the decadent wealth of foreign Judeo capitalist businesses to sway them from their sacred task of civilizing the savage heart of Africa. All the while, the defense attorney gave stammering, blubbering, half-hearted excuses after an hour of this performance. The judge swung his gavel down. I pronounced the accused, Hugh von Open and Geld von Blutnitz. High, guilty of high treason. The sentence shall be lifetime imprisonment. Death by firing squad. I kind of like that one. But we're going to do lifetime imprisonment. We don't need PP, right? The BN BNUP leaders spotted across, crossing the Iberian border. Urgent from the desk of Colonel Bevalta von Cameroon Hans Stock. For the most part, the region surrounding Iberian's overseas province of Equatorial Africa has been, quieting, or been quite post-annexation. Many of the local peoples have kept their heads down as long as they aren't interfered with too harshly and can maintain normal economic relations. However, this may be changing. The Brazilian National Unity Party, led by a suspected communist sympathizer named Marian Nugobi, has emerged as an organization opposing the governance of the Reichstag. A local informants have noted regular movements of vehicles between the Reichstag and Equatorial Africa, and according to them, the drivers are known associates of the BNUP. This may be regular commerce, but it is very possible that the BNUP is obtaining weapons and supplies for our violent resistance. Keep an eye on them. Uh, let's see. Other comments from the last video. People recommend I should play more Red Flood. Yes, I do plan on playing that eventually. I would like to get back into the mod, even though at the time of this recording, I've only played that mod once. Cool. Uh, I should put I should have put more anti-tank into divisions before the South African War started. Yes, you are absolutely 100% correct. I should have. I really should have. I didn't realize how tough it would be, so... Yeah, I really should have. But, you know, hindsight is 2020, which I don't want to go back to. So, hey, you know what? Uganda, it's... We've gotten it all the way up to worsening. Like... Uganda? You mean stability. And actually, once we get over 50%, we'll be actually pretty good. Uh, for the military budget, we're just going to slash it. we got so much population there. Jesus Christ, even though it's cutting, being cut down. Effective total manpower is modified to 21%. Not bad. But, border clashes against the Anzandi tribes. Urgent. From the desk of the colonial Babata von Ubangi Shari Otter Lebensheil. Over the past two weeks, the Ubangi Shari garrison authorities have been subjected to no fewer than six attacks at outposts and settlements along the Momu River, near the frontier of the Congo region. The perpetrators of these attacks, which have killed two German soldiers and injured five more, are believed to be members of the Zandi peoples. These attacks are sporadic but surprisingly well organized and have taken advantage of the relative isolation of the Ubangi Shari region in this way. It is reminiscent of the clashes among the Cameroonian frontier in the 50s. At the moment, the office of the colonial Vavalta does not recommend escalation against local rebels as military assets in the Ubangi Shari region have been stretched thin post annexation. Support the local garrisons? Yeah, we will. We shall support them. Additionally, another comment is investigations, yeah, like I said earlier, investigations are a waste of time. Like, yeah, it was a complete waste of time. There was no point to even do them, so. That was really disappointing that we couldn't even do anything about that, so. Uh, another comment from yesterday said, we should try not to collapse. Oh, we're trying. We're trying not to collapse here. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so, atmosphere of unrest. Holy, bad words. Bad words. Lots of bad words. Substantial. Severe. Uh, not bad. Surrounded by degeneracy. I wish we could do that. Emptying the houses. Actually, let's take a look at this. Right, did we get up to... 
look at that. Look at that. It's acceptable. Hans Hutick is a genius. An absolute genius. Emptying the home. Schnell, 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 move out! Amelia woke up in the middle of the night to an angry Nazi in uniform screaming to her face. Her roommates were terrified just as she was, staring at the rifles pointed against them. The soldier kicked her in the back, screaming orders in a language that Amelia didn't understand, but most likely he was telling her to get out. It's not like Amelia was used to the abuse from the Germans, but being forced to leave her own house with her roommates at gunpoint was something unheard of. Amelia realized she wasn't the only one awake that night. The entire village was being rounded up and brought to the train station plaza. It was the most important place in town, mostly because people went there to go watch the trains leave. The soldiers lined up all the town inside the plaza in neat little lines ordered by height. The first thing Amelia noticed was that the station was lit up and a cattle train was waiting in the tracks. This was very strange because Amelia had never seen a train coming this late at night. An old and sleek German officer was scrutinizing the line of people in front of him with a deadly glare only interrupting his investigation to answer his subordinates. After a moment, that seemed like an eternity. The officer deigned to reveal the reason why he came there in the middle of the night. Well, it's MPLA terrorist. With his elementary Portuguese mixed with a very heavy German accent, the man looked like a caricature of the Nazi officer, but no one in the plaza felt like laughing. Most people were staring at their feet, trying to avoid his glare. You know where the terrorists are, ya? Yeah? Still no answers. The officer shouted something in German to the soldiers nearby, and they started moving towards the crowd. And then they started grabbing one person every ten. Amelia couldn't finish praying not to be caught after she found herself getting dragged from the group. She screamed and screamed, but to no avail, she was shoved into the train, scrammed together with other terrified people. As the train left the station, Amelia prayed once more to whoever might hear to keep her safe. She took the midnight train, going anywhere. <laughs> oh boy, let's go empty the cities. To fight the growing native menace, every city must be patrolled. Every building, from the factory to the village hut, should be monitored. The Shah Hitler's early or earlier reforms or efforts and surveillance and monitoring have yielded great results. We just need to apply the methods on a larger scale and extend the system outside Quilomain. And in those places not connected to the electrical grid, we will simply increase our air patrols. The air fleet confiscated from the traders will serve very nicely. This is beautiful. Well, even Uganda's nice. Nice. Uganda secured. Transcript of document received at 1 o'clock. 14th of February, 1967, top secret. For Shah Hitler, Hans Hutig. Shah Hitler, I received excellent news. The local administration based in the Uganda region have reported the successful containment of the rebel forces known as X, who have been causing a ruckus ever since their successful overthrow of the station garrison. The guerrillas' commanding officers have been detained, ready for execution within a few hours of you receiving this letter. While the dissidents have broken rank and scattered, the remaining leader of the organization, a man known as X, was not present during the roundup or security searches, meaning that he and the core of the insurgency still remaining hiding. While we've crushed their petty efforts at the uprising this time, the group still lingers as an ever-present threat, reconsolidating and rearming to retry and gain their freedom. Should he and his colleagues initiate another insurrection, however, our forces may not be sufficiently prepared to deal with them, quickly allowing them to quickly, once again, gain an advantage and wrestle the control from us or the region. In light of this, I humbly ask you, Herr Hutig, that with your innate swiftness, Ensure that the Reichstag never lets these mongrels rear their ugly heads once more. Heil Hutik, Colonia Vabata X. Wunderbar! Sehr gut. If we get that, like, done, we should actually get, like, more political power or something like that. I think that'd be really good or get even more stability. Maybe we did. I There's just a bunch of numbers on screen. So, Death of Mutara III. Reports from the desk of Colonia Vabata Cote France. According to reports I received, the King of Rwanda, Mutari III, has died. This comes as no surprise. He was sick and was recently bedridden. Shortly before his death, he was purported to have given. His crown to the son, now Kigeli V, after a series of strokes. An official announcement of his death has been given out by Kigeli himself, although, to be quite honest, I do not care. I report developments on the situation with the new king as I come along. What does concern me is attacks along the Ugandish border are increasing. Patrols have gone missing, many have turned out dead, and those who do survive are generally grievously injured. While it's not spiraled out of control yet, I fear that this is merely a sign of things to come. Long live the king? Oh boy! Report on dissidents in Kenya. From the desk of Colonel Vavata Kenya Maximilian Grabna. One of the most persistent troublemakers in the Kenya region of the Reichstag is a local leader calling himself the Ker on oh, the Ker, an indigenous term apparently intended to lay claim on the political representation of the whole of the primitive Luau people. Our local intelligence assets have pinpointed the true identity of the Ker as one Jarga Jara Mogi Oginaga Odinga. A recognized chieftain of the Luo tribe in the colonies interior, Odinga has been a known dissident since the early days of Aryan dominance in Africa, but his non-violence has led to his activities largely being ignored in the face of a more radical, violent dissidents from other local community leaders. Recently, though, the Kia's low-level resistance to the Reichstag's dominion has escalated, and he has issued a public call for sovereignty for the Luo, and his creation of a union of Luo people against the tyrants. Obviously, this is nonsense, and Odinga and his compatriots have no power to resist the Aryan domination of Africa, the so-called Kare. It's not a serious threat to our rule, but the thinly veiled treason of Odinga's decree is still not to warrant additional show of force in Kenya. Due to their sympathy for Lodinga's call to action, a few more guards probably couldn't hurt. Right now, we definitely gotta get more command power, though. Oh my goodness, point three one a day is so bad, but the mean stability is very bad, too. <laughs> oh, man. It's not good. Not good at all. And we're about halfway done with empty cities, so... It sucks not having enough stability. Yeah, that really sucks. Like, I don't understand why, like, surrounded by degeneracy, yeah, I get that. We should, we, I guess we really should have sent, like, 
Um, did just not done, sent the evidence that we had to Germania, but oh well. But in the end, if we can get like no debt, national debt, that's a plus, right? Yeah, we're still acceptable, which is great. Ubangi Shari is looking so good. That's one of the most stable regions we have, as well as Mozambique. I love it. So after that. Empty the countryside? Why not? To fight the barbarians that threaten our glorious project within the rebellions, we need to monitor the countryside down to the smallest, mo most insignificant village. As I'm sure you all know, the Dark Continent is a savage place full of hiding spots. It's in the jungle. The underbrush where the enemy has hit the advantage, or has the advantage, and that's where we must hit. The savage native thinks nature protects him, but she can't protect him from napalm. Which, actually, you know what? We're not going to do that yet, because look, we're all acceptable now. We keep doing that. Which means we probably hit 100% and we'll probably get maxed out. So we will do this one eventually. So since I've already read this, I won't read it again. But that might allow us to do some other focuses, shall we? The horrible beasts? Maybe to rule a continent? Maybe the African disaster? Werewolves against a, the Silva? A system of repression? I love repression. Let's do this one next. The problems of the Rex Commissariat of Central Africa and Sudwest Africa do not just stop at the support of subversive native activity. For the rebels to prosper, they needed a system suited to their needs. Corrupt, inefficient, and unnecessarily impenetrable. The lack of transparency makes it impossible to properly investigate what goes where. To control Africa, we need a centralized system where all authority is centered around the Stat Halahutig. Under his watch, we can build an efficient system where not even a single bullet can find its way into the hands of the native degenerates. And emptying the cities. Matthias was in a man, made for philosophizing. When he set out to do things, he did them diligently without asking questions. It was to these two qualities that made him one of the most efficient pilots in the Luftwaffe, and his rise in the ranks brought him close to the next Commissar Schenk. The admiration for him brought Matthias to the ends of the earth, eager to work for the suit of West African administration led by his personal hero. But all changed when Ost African SS executed Schenk and his inner circle for treason and aiding terrorist groups. Matthias was dumbfounded. He thought the friendship he had with Schenk was real, so why was Wolfgang planning to destroy the Rex Commissariat from inside? Were his plans more important than his friendship? He remember what Schenk had told him after a flight over the Angolan jungle where no payload was dropped. It's not about protecting the indigenous, it's about protecting ourselves. Matthias didn't really understand what Schenk was talking about, but his words somehow resonated deeply with him. But that was in the past, Matthias proved his innocence and was quickly reintegrated into the Reichstadt Air Force, where he wouldn't waste a second chance for anything in the world. The sound from the control panel brought Matthias back to reality. He had a payload to drop on some rubble base, but as he was checking the coordinates on the radar, something fell off. Those coordinates looked familiar to Matthias, but he can tell why. As his plane approached the objective, a terrible realization dawned on Matthias. This was a village Schenk spared during that flight. Matthias could only watch helplessly as the people down below running in every direction, like little black ants when their nest was disturbed. As the night sky was tinged with an eerie orange glow coming from other bomb villages, Matthias remembered Schenk's words and finally understood what he meant. He was protecting himself and his men from his horror. And now you know the truth, and the truth shall potentially set you free. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, if I, I heard recently at the time of this recording that that's not the full quote. I think that's from the scriptures or something like that, too, so. All I know is we might be bombing for Jesus, and the, you know that might just be okay. Ocean report from Namibia. From the desk of Colonia Bavalta, Namibia, Kala Friedrich Hoka. Administrative capital in Sudwest Africa, Windhoek, is presently under siege by native rebels flying the tricolor of the Sudwest Afrikanische Volks, Volks organization, the SVAVO. SV, oh yeah, whatever. Their attack appeared spontaneously, without warning from collaborating native forces, whom we can therefore assume to be involved. Our local Schutzstaffel units have successfully repelled Zvavo's attempts to seek control of the city center, and have forced heavy casualties in a victorious delaying action against the insurrection, unfortunately. In the process, they have lost control over both the city's outskirts and much of the surrounding countryside through the rebels. The situation here is urgent. The sheer number of dissidents surrounding Windhoek has led to our guests in suffering ammo shortages and dealing with them all. Urgent reinforcements will be required to relieve the siege and free local forces to mop up the remaining participants. Oh, crap. Um, we, we get worsened anyway, so... Let's do... Uh, just do a whole tide. So, we want the airwaves. Report from the desk of Colonel Velvalta des Angola Elish Moosfeld. Investigation into the perpetrators of the raid on the N Namib airbase has successfully or succeeded in identifying the group responsible. In fact, they have identified themselves. Recently, a wide band radio broadcast has been detected in the stations across Angola. Sent to Portuguese, the message uh, claims to be, or the message claims to be, the work of the UNITA, or the so-called National Union for the Total Independence of Angola. The contents of the message, omitting pointless grandstanding, were a call to the native Angolans to resist the lawful government and prepare for a war of independence. The station transmitting the message is yet to be located, but will soon be destroyed. Local gears and leaders have been ordered to prepare for a possible period of unrest due to the message. It is unknown precisely how many settlements have received the message due to low ownership of personal radios in the colony, although its power was reportedly sufficient to be heard in the neighboring Congo. Nevertheless, the Portuguese continents of the, or contents of the message limits its effectiveness outside Angola. 
Try to locate it? Yeah, just gonna try to locate it. It's fine with me. And I'm trying to finish up my coffee here, too. Hmm. But we're quite still acceptable literally everywhere. 99% almost in Congo and Mozambique. And almost 100%, 99% in Rwanda or Rundi. I love it. So I think that with the Boer Republic, we, if we don't act maybe fast enough, they could have a second South African Civil War. Which would be pretty darn bad. Man, oh man, they don't have unique focus tree. I would love these groups, to have, this nation to have unique focus tree. That'd be so cool. So cool. A system of repression and fighting in Zimbabwe. From the desk of the colonial Babata on Zimbabwe, Rikard Rick, Bear. It is in the opinion of the colonial Babata that the impacts of the annexation of the Zimbabwe region have been detrimental to the continued presence of law and order. While relations between the English settlers and the black, native blacks have never been as positive as in regions such as Zambia, the reorganization of military commands have created a power vacuum in which a disordered descent can thrive. Already, our government has been made aware of a series of violent clashes between Germans, Anglos, and native blacks across the country over the past few weeks. In addition, it is believed that the aforementioned power vacuum has been utilized by power groups or rebel groups such as Zimbabwe African People's Union to regroup and extend their influence. Allocation of additional supplies, materials, and manpower requested, we don't have enough ground and trouble in Urundi. Reports from the desk of Colonial Bavata, Cote France. As you know, with the recent death of the King Arundi, there's been a succession crisis as never been bothered to nominate, he never bothered to nominate a successor. This is led to severe infighting that has rendered the region uncontrollable, as there are several successors vying for the throne. However, I do not believe that this is a significant enough th issue for us to intervene in. As far as I'm concerned, the natives are busy killing each other instead of us or our soldiers. Any resistance to come from Urundi will not come from them, as they would be far too weak to stand up to our might. It would be a waste of men and bullets to intervene now or later. I will continue to monitor the situation. Acknowledged. Mobutu's Chafan. Our investigation into the plantation massacre of last week has turned up an interesting lead. We found several diaries kept by the slaves where Mobutu Sese Seko is referenced, referenced as an inspirational figure. We also found a note that implied some of the slaves had been in contact with the savage terror group led by Mobutu. We believe that Joseph Desire Mobutu, the black savage that the traitor Muda insanely promoted to a commanding position in the SS, has been turning off his SS training against or turning his SS training against our righteous cause, so commanding a terrorist organization of natives and escaped slaves under the name Mobutu Sese Seko. Upon your order, my men will commence a search around the plantation for any hidden footpaths that Mobutu's agents might have been used to get in contact with these slaves. Hopefully, these trails will lead us right to the snake's den. Don't waste any time. Bone the whole thing down. Just bring me his head. Absolutely. Alright, so here, with the decisions tab, it's lagging a little bit, whatever. Um, we're still acceptable for the most part, uh, except in Zimbabwe and Uganda. But I think we can wait just a little bit longer as well. Now, I asked you guys yesterday, well, actually, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do werewolves against the silver or gather our strength, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, there's people who want me to do German management uh, focus versus uh, African exploitation, so it is what it is. And there's actually, at the time of this recording, there's equal, literally equal support for both the new states, new policies, or keeping up with the Joneses. A more Burgundian system, Ein Reines Reich, Africa, increased Germanization targets, camp equalization, burn them all. Oh, total integration of death and pure, pure Africa. Well, I like both. Uh, work, strict work quotas, huh? Worker construction projects. Uh, horrible bosses. Well, the trail leads nowhere first. Urgent, from the desk of the colonial of Alta Des Congos, Alta Folchina. My men fruitlessly searched for the plantation grounds for a few hours until a local farm boy approached for the squad leader. He reported seeing a few of the escaping slaves disappearing into a thicket on the eastern edge of the property. Upon further investigation, we found a footpath, footpath there. Upon following this path, my squad meandered for a few miles before they reaching a dead end as the trail disappeared into impassable jungle. The farm boy gave us a false step has already been arrested and sent to a labor camp for its deception. The jungle teams with savages and traitors. African disaster? Well... Let's go ahead and do that. To rule a continent might not be bad to do, because we want to help them out. So, let's maybe do this one first, and then do the African... Eh, I'll do the African disaster first, because we got to take control ourselves first before we can help those. What a gosh darn mess. No worse, Africa is a total crap show. Plain and simple. Hundreds of resistance movements all throughout the continent is threatening to tear apart our dreams of an Aryan-dominated Africa. Mullers and Shanks were too soft for the Africans, treating them, bargaining with them, even incorporating them into the SS. A disgrace. Still, shifting blame does nothing to change our situation. We need to act and soon before we can lose the entire continent. Airstrikes, commando raids, chemical warfare, nothing is left off the table. We'll do anything and everything to ensure the survival of our state and people at any cost. The Afakanisha Code. The Aryan Man is a man dedicated to the fatherland, to the race, to the capture of Lebensraum, and in it, their primal, instinctual will to protect these things, no matter how much sickly, thick, and black blood must be must flow from out 
of the Untermensch, who did oppose a racist grand vision for the world. The festering, wreathing, and despicable hides of corruption and degeneracy that were the Rex Commissariats under the rule of the flyboy Shank and the hedonist crockpot of savagery known as Muller Attestament to the eternal laws of the Aryan race. They let loose the savage. Pleasure chasing baboons of native Africa onto the supple hides of our stoic Aryan soldiers. What was the result of this free haphazard blood mixing? Muslim men became one of the apes and wild beasts of the lamb, chasing creature comforts and throwing themselves into cultures of inherently barbarity. Shanks men feminize themselves until they are unable to even lift a finger against the very insurgents who are lodging bullets into their necks. Those who continue to attempt to exterminate our race man to man, we are at the brink of absolute total racial catastrophe, and the only thing that stands between us and them is the thin line of the most dedicated, brave, and virtuous Aryan soldiers who beat back the gripping claws of the wretched, ever corrupting Aryan de evolution. On the orders of a shot, Hitler. A regiment of intense, non-stop training known as the De Afrikanische Accord added to ruthless and merciless constant punishment in order to terrify the wandering minds of our troops into conformity has been initiated on our units. The Stahlhalter Stahl is convinced in order for the murky, darkened blood of our Aryans in Africa to purify themselves for our soldiers must live and die hard through a program of Spartanism in all things, especially in military affairs. Our missions, our goals and efforts will all be pointless if the Aryan race we are working to secure Africa for is tainted, puppeted by the very black savages we wish to extinguish from the face of humanity. For the glory of the Aryan race. Also, another comment from Mr. saying, or said, I'm speaking very fast, holy cow, that the title of the last video... Uh, would get me demonetized at the time of this recording. It has not yet. Man, if someone from like Kotaku or like maybe even BuzzFeed like <laughs> discovered what you know was <laughs> and looked at like the titles of some of the, uh, my videos or even other people's videos, it would not go very well for the community probably. But that's okay because we enjoy this, right? We enjoy this a whole lot. So we have Otto Forschner, not bad, the local tyrant. Karl Chemuski, which is pretty garbage. He's a club kleptocrat. I wish I could change him. Why oh, can't I change him? Uh, Joseph. Uh, Yosef Mangos, ah, uh, and Richard Bear. They are who they are. No more, no less. Ten new posters on Dar es Salaam's walls. Oh no. From the desk of Colonia Babata Tanjanika, Hans Almaya. As of recently, a relatively minor independence movement for the Tanjanika, labeled the Tanjanikan or Tangankan. Uh, African National Union have come into blows with local representatives of the Reichstag. Though the movement has been effectively subdued until late, only bringing up minor issues with their ability to govern. Its retained influence in the region has now entered into a clandestine widespread anti-Reichstag propaganda campaign, presumably to influence the locals into insurgency. The campaign, although we are, as of now, unable to stem its flow of propaganda, has been deemed a failure by both myself and my adjuncts. Its locations for the placement of propaganda are easily recognizable and consistent, allowing us to catch both many active dissidents and prevent their work from being seen by the larger population. These so-called attempts at dissidents by the group Tanu signals to us stability in the region as any and all active dissident groups are under close watch and serve no threat to the Reichstag. In case an all risk of insurgency or uprising is soon to be eliminated, it is assured. I do not ask for assurance and an unexpected successor. Reports from the desk of Colonia Valvalta, Côte France. It seems as though time has run out on the king of Orondi's successors. As of a few days ago, all successors to the king of Orondi have been overthrown by militias. Great! In the place they've installed Michael Macombaro, one of their own. I do not believe that this poses any kind of immediate threat to our hegemony. Or hegemony. I only see this in the weakness of the natives. The fact of the matter is that they cannot hope to match the discipline of the Germans. Our worst, or our worst soldiers can defeat their best armies. The situation is fine, and order will be restored soon. I'll be sending the Estes once they are ready in order to finally put an end to this ridiculousness. I will personally see to it that your own is stabilized. At least someone is doing something. Oh. Wait, Arundi. Acceptable. Uneasy. So, that'd be really cool if we could get, like, at least one of these states to be 100% great. But then again, I mean, that'll never happen probably, so. It is what it is. And actually, you know what? We're still stable, except for Uganda and Zimbabwe, which is totally okay. Since I've studied Zimbabwe just a little bit in our own history, I don't remember much about it, but a little bit. And I don't know anything about Uganda, but as long as we're above 50%, I'm feeling pretty good, so... The African disaster. I love it. And actually, we might consider trying to get more political power as fast as possible, maybe? So, we'll cut that as well. I think the next one we should do would be either one of these two. So, overall, I think with this one, or this one, like I said earlier, there's an equal amount of support. So, Joneses, or New State, New Policies. Uh... Ooh, grabbing equipment, native conscription. Well, we don't need really more native conscription. Uh, I do want to help with the, the Boer Republic, but overall, I'm just going to go with this one just because you have a more Burgundian system, which 
makes me sound makes me feel a little bit more happy. So this is cool and all, but it looks like you get more political power, which is something I want. Let's be keeping up with the Joneses. Is. Ukraine? No. Asla? No. Poland? Certainly not. The Netherlands and Norway? Those are the pick of degeneracy within the Reich. Now that I've dealt with the traitors down here, and I would gladly shoot those bad words too if Germany wasn't filled with those degenerates of its own. Nothing works. Why do none of them work? Unless, yes, I didn't know that I think of that before. Burgundy, yes, maybe he was right all along. There aren't any disgusting, self-interested administrators. No bad word natives running around murdering governors. No malingering messages. That's what I need. He was right all along, but why didn't I listen to him then? No matter, I will make up for it. More than that, I will beat him. He will respect me. I will forge his subhuman, infested crap hole into something he couldn't dream of doing. If him that wants to turn some insignificant French city into a factory, I will turn this entire continent into an assembly plant. He says he's gotten rid of degeneracy. He will know what that means when he sees it. I, he will, if it's the last thing I do. Every last area in this continent will work until the degenerate filth of Jewish influence is completely exercised from their veins. I'm getting into this way too much. Holy crap. Whew. Um, anyways, African situation an overview. Any questions? Hans Hutzig was sitting together with several other SS officers around the table. Juno Bear and Chimuski were flanking the Stadthalter, the formerly completely oblivious to the terrible situation delineated by a superior and the latter with a steely expression around his face. Wondering if his most important underlings even understood what transpired from the countless reports, a brisk voice arose among the ranks and asking for explanations. Name and rank officer, Hutzig replied. A standout in fear, Schmidt, sir. We are always to, to understand that due to negligence from the former Reich Commissar Schenkenmüller, not only we lack vital intel, but some that we might have might be compromised. Is that correct? Precisely. Then we have to assume that every native is an enemy, right? A cold smell ran across Hans' face. Yes, standout in fear. Everyone might be an enemy. The native woman carrying what might be seem might seem like water could be a weapon smuggler. That native child, a trained soldier, an unassuming village, a den of Voltaire's. The war and the incompetence from the previous administrations in Central Africa and Sudvest. Africa made most of our intel, intel completely useless. We must use everything at hand to eradicate the barbarity that those traitors let happen under the watch. Of course, you will have full discretionary power in how you decide to neutralize threats. Any other questions? No, sir. Very well. Dismissed. With a brisk hail. The officers roared from the chairs and went out the room in a perfect unison. Yes, who took thought to defeat the subhuman? We must descend to the level. We must use the brutality against them. Only then the light of civilization will shine in all of Africa. The true soldiers never rest. I'm getting into this. Quite a bit. Holy crap. We're just doing what we think is right. Really? That's all. That's all. That's all we're doing. It's only 1967. June 1st and June 2nd. And who knows? Maybe we'll catch up with the... Oh. Joneses. Damaged garrisons. Oh boy. Gunshots heard 15 kilometers north of Salisbury. From the desk of Colonial Bavata von Zimbabwe. Wicked Baya. The ongoing instability in the Zimbabwe region has intensified over the past month. A notable bloody incident recently took place in the towns of Nyabera, in the northwest of Sal Salisbury. Nyabera has become well known as a place of where black farmers and ranchers could find a measure of stability and prosperity, the Kausas. A family of cattle ranchers who hold a good deal of influence in the town have seen their farmstead attacked on at least three occasions by combined groups of Anglo and German settlers. Thus far, at least two members of the Kausu family have been killed, and several whites have been wounded from returning fire. The situation at Niabera is in many ways reflective of the, re of the rest of the region, with other towns seeing similar disputes over land and wealth boil over into violence. This is not sustainable. Sending reinforcements? Oh, you bet we are. Oh, you bet we're going to send in a lot of reinforcements. I, I, I love this. You know, I love child soldiers. I love gas. I love napalm. I mean, how else are you going to feel good about yourself, I guess? Man, I should really keep some of this stuff. Mm. I'm enjoying this way too much. Uh, I might have a problem, but you know what? With me posting at least three videos every single day for the most part, why not have a little, a little bit of fun? Stage one, I'll, we go on stage two. We got to go to stage two as fast as possible. We got to go faster, faster, faster. A more Burgundian system, you say? Hmm. Wait, we were ad administrative unknowns with the Afrikanische system. Um, devastation, and that's yeah, our Reichstag. Legacy of traitors. Hopefully, we can get remove that someday. Uh, atmosphere of unrest. Oh, that gives us stability and more political power. So it gives us more political power, but less stability. Well, that hurts our garrisons and stuff. Um, we can grab more rubber. It makes more sense for us to grab rubber, right? Uh, economy, not bad. 
Oh, from Namibia. From the colonial from the desk of Colonia Vavata, Namibia, Ka Friedrich Hoka. We've successfully discovered warring news. While we've been successful in crushing the insurrection and executions of captured dissidents are commencing, the situation in Windhoek deteriorated considerably between a receipt of reinforcements and their eventual arrival and safety. Savabo units were able to induce a chaos around across almost the entirety of Windhoek, inducing numerous casualties and reducing SS control to a few fortified locations. The most worrying part of it all, though, were the reactions of Windhoek's native Untamensch populace to the rebels' invasion. Reports have arrived at my desk that some New Yoma, Savavo's leader, was seen walking the streets of Windhoek openly during the siege, waving to the rowdy crowds of savages and sharing triumphant cheers with a seemingly large rebel supporting populace. Investigations are already commencing to discern the identities of those who participated in these demonstrations, but the fact that they occurred at all is a profoundly worrying sign of the state of mind of the populace. Anyone shook New Yoma's hands will have theirs removed. Ooh, I love it. Yay. Mm, honestly, this stability, I mean, yeah, it's uneasy, uneasy, uneasy. It's still above, slightly above 60%, so... <clears throat> We'll do this eventually. I want to do a, to rule a continent just so we get the things moving for the Boer Republic, who we want to make sure stays stable. The Boer Republic has been the soft underbelly to, a whole, to our holds ever since the South African War concluded. Herbal still jumped the border, and the country is beginning to descend into complete anarchy. That is, of course, unacceptable. There's only one way to fix the mess that has been created in the South: direct intervention. If the Boers are too weak to rule themselves, then we must step in and give our allies firm guidance, whether they like it or not. Political purifications. Doc, warm blood, continued to gush out of the tore open wound across the man's thigh as panic began to course through the room as about as terribly as fast as the adrenaline was pumping throughout the on man's body. Strings of curses poured forth from the German's lips as he rocketed a chair up against the doorknob, hoping to buy his withered life just a few more minutes. Stab, stab for this, the man said as he shakily adjusted his glasses while smearing blood across the lens. The manila folder was already ruined and crumpled, but inside lay the answers towards a reason for which life began to feel as fleeting as it was now. To whom it may concern, it has come to my attention that following the ending of open conflict, against the South Africans and their American allies, coupled with the reorganization of the Reich's territories of Africa under the Reichskommissar Hans Hutig. A number of administrative errors have come into the light regarding the handling of the new Reichstadt. In accordance with the contingencies filed under the Reich's foreign occupied territories protocol, I thus requ requested that all this for a simple request? Rex Komasar Hutik had some difficulties in his administration, and now I'm a traitor? The man whispered to himself, rocking, rocking as he sniffed, uh, sniffled towards a burning pain across, spurring across his thigh. The stab had turned dark and crusted as visions of his wife and Germania flew across him as chips of wood exploded across the room, and members of Hutik's on guard came rushing in, pistols drawn. To the victor goes the blood. Ah, uh, yes. We do as we must. And we can't build anything. The Battle of Gittiga. From the desk of the colonel Babata Kurt Franz, urgent. The Arundish rebels have assaulted Gitiga recently with the probable support of Ugandish, uh, Ugandish rebels. For three days, half of the city was under the uh, control. However, the SS was able to push them back, albeit at huge cost to the forces. I do not know of the full extent of the casualty so far, but reports say that at least a thousand troops are injured. The assault on Gitiga. Gitiga only shows the natives a determination to overthrow our hegemony, despite the weakness. Even so, I do not believe that they can successfully push our armies back so long as we have superior technology and men. Our hold over Urundi is assured. We do not need reinforcements for now. This seems too good to be true. Are they lying to us? We have enough infantry equipment before we do anything else. I want to make sure we have the Wehrmacht here. Good. And our occupied territories have civilian oversight. Good. Oh, look. Oh. Oh, we have rebels. Huh. So much reading, and that's okay, you know, it happens. Um, oh, there's still resistance here. But anyways, Kenya Dissidents Arming. From the desk of Colonel Vavalta, Kenya Maximilian Grabner. The chaos agitations in Africa have escalated. Far from being cowed by the arrival of SS reinforcements into the region, the Luo reader, or leader has begun organizing Luo brigades across the Reichstadt territory claimed as his people's ethnic homeland. Despite the ominous name, all of our intelligence suggests that these so-called brigades are something closer than the number to an SS grupa, consisting of only a handful of brigades of a dozen or so men each. Such a small force is barely worth a blip on the radar and would stand absolutely no chance of offering even piecemeal resistance to the SS authority. On owing to this, a plan has been concocted to use Luo brigades as a tool of entrapment, allowing the most extreme local separatist elements to coalesce into a single identifiable group to be purged once the opportunity is right. This will help curtail the low-level active resistance endemic to all Africa and make our future administration more secure over the long term, putting rats into a trap. We do have enough political power just in case things go badly, and Zimbabwe is at 56%, so we gotta keep an eye on them. But we do have a little bit more combined power uh, than last time. But local militias take control of the Sanzibar Hafen. Urgent telegram, Colonel Valata von Sanzibar, Franz Hustle. I regret to inform the Stahelle that following a raid by the SS Polizei forces into a warehouse reported to a house, so several leaders of the anti air movement and Sanzibar. A firefight broke out in which 12 men of the garrison were killed in the service of the Reichstag. Unfortunately, this appears to have triggered an organized uprising by the leader of the natives, which meant it can 
managed to take control of Sansibar Hafen, the port district. We have previously not experienced such unrest among the natives and Sansibar, the reason for which I suspect that this uprising was triggered due to Italian interference. Therefore, I suspect that the rebellion is no real basis of support, and that quick and decisive military action to destroy the rebels will suffice to restore control of Sansibar. Hai Hutig, Aktung, Stat Hatlatel, Hontig. I must urgently and anonymously convey to you that the seriousness of the situation in Sansibar is much greater than you are being told, and the rebellion commands a large degree of popular support. Any mention of foreign influence is likely exaggerated, and remaining on the islands will likely be a waste of resources. Hai Hutig. And for Hussar of the traitor in his midst and ready the troops for an attack on Sansibar Hafen, a mysterious man makes an interesting point. We will draw from Sansibar and deal with the island when resources are permitted. What if resources are never permitted? What if they never permitted? That is the question. Um, culture is Swahili? No, we gotta go in. We're going in. I don't care what happens. We are going straight in. Uneasy, 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 uneasy. Um, I think we'll do one more focus and then we'll go back and improve and try to improve the situation some more. Yeah, this is a glitch in the game, a little bug. The black market just keeps popping up. I don't know. Hopefully the devs know about it, so. To rule the continent. Good, so we'll go through that one. We're going to do another 35-day focus as well. And then we'll go back over here, because this is another 35-day focus, in which we're doing okay, I think. Uh, cleaning up the OFN, sweeping up the remnants, uh, military records. Influence of the ANC in our politics will decrease. The boards won't like that. The boards won't like that either. Find socialists. Bombing the south. Well, I don't know if we want to do that. Oh, a little bit of lag. A gunshots echo, huh? Reports from the Jessica Colonia Babata Rikad Bay. According to reports in Salisbury in the, in the field, the insurgent leader Joshua Nicomo has been killed, and an apparent operation linked to the shootout heard a few weeks ago. It is unclear what is happening right now in the field with his death. There is a general confusion, as is written, as some believe that Nicomo is still alive, while others believe that a local ruler might have taken over in the wake of his death. Thus, I propose we set a series of raids in the surrounding villages in a 30 kilometer radius around the city. This is a precaution to ensure that rebellion is prevented, or at the very least curbed until the situation is brought under full control, acknowledged, and approved. Now, Nicomo, that sounds very familiar to me. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know where I heard it. I think Nokomo's actually... Oh. Uh-oh. That's really... Okay, if it's going to lag... Oh, it's something going on down there, because if it lags that hard, I'm a little worried. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, now it's worsening. Uh, we might actually do... Uh, let's do one immediately, because none of these are at 90%. So we'll do one more, and then we'll go back to some other one, so... Colonia Babata Foshna's worries. From the Colonia Babata des Congos Alta Foshna. The situation in the Congo continues to deteriorate. Most of the SS units under my commander are spent guarding the Congo Dam. Their numbers dwindle by the day. We've been able to rebuff all attacks on the dam so far, but should anyone break through our defenses, the colony, colony will be utterly ruined. Beyond the dam, rebels are running r roughshod over the country. Just three days ago, one of the Congo's largest plantations all had all its overseer, overseers massacred as the slaves used SS-style tactics to overcome the guards. Every week, it seems, one of the, our SS squads goes missing on the march, and searchers find their heads on stakes and their bodies tied to the trees with their own intestines. Resistance on the part of the Unter mentioned to the Aryan race's rightful dominance is nothing new, of course, but these rebels are being armed, trained, and organized by Reichstag generals. While it is true that the generals were traitors to race and follow them, I worry that our arrests on site policies driving trained, dangerous men into the jungle, where they serve rebellious elements and further hinder the Aryanization of the Congo. Watch your tongue, Otto. It's... Worries are heard. Watch your tongue, Otto. This seems like it actually got worse for us. So, let's do it anyways. 68, 60, 86. Eh, I didn't do anything. I thought it was supposed to improve. Eh, whatever. What about the budget, my friends? And then let's go ahead and do uh, empty the countryside. Yeah, a gruesome death. Report from the Deputy Colonial Vavata Alto Rima Urgent. The situation in Rwanda Urundi could not have been handled much worse. Colonial Vavata Cut France was found brutally misfigured and dying. His body has also been partially eaten by animals, and according to recent reports, maggots were eating him. The SS has trouble identifying his body after he was found. Our best doctors could not save him despite their best efforts. After a brief investigation, we concluded that his death happened due to the capture and his subsequent torture by the Ugandish, uh, Ugandish militias. We do not know where exactly they are, although rest assured that the reprisals have been ordered. However, I'm aware that Rwanda Urundi have no leadership after. Of Franz's death. I'm unsure what has happened to his subordinates, and I fear there are no successes that have been nominated. The area may have to operate without any real leadership at the top. God verdammt. Empty the countryside. Now, I read this one earlier, I believe, so. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, but this is the next one we're going to choose. Administrative overhaul. Several files were scattered all over Hutik's desk, the contents running from the mundane to the top secret, and all of them were found after months of investigation of the Central African and Sudwest African archives. For Hutik, this was something inconceivable just months ago, where he depestered the bureaucrats back in Germania only for his request to get ignored or even worse, suffer the indignity of being called a traitor from the corrupt pencil pushers who couldn't give a gosh darn about the bottle lamb. Now, all the secrets were on his desk, and it took all, all it took was simply to take the initiative. After all, if you wanted something done yourself, well, you gotta do it yourself. 
Still reading the file made Hutig realize that the situation is much worse than he imagined. The corruption present in Central Africa and Sudwest Africa is so pervasive that they were an essential part of the previous administrations. We might have conquered their territories, Hutig thought, but not their souls. The road is so long before we can call this part of Africa a nation fit for the Aryan race. What we need is German discipline. Actually, how is this looking right now? Yeah, I'm glad we're doing it now because this is worsening, which is not good. Shocks circling. And situation in the Boer Republic is uneasy. Apart from the desk of Colonial Babalta, desk Angola, Eric Mulsfeld. The call of resistance from UNITA has indeed led to increased trouble from the natives. Garrison <clears throat> commanders report churlishness from the locals in rural areas. Most notably, a scheduled patrol on the outskirts of Luanda failed to make radio contact at the desi designated time. When a second patrol was sent back to put back track their route, the bodies were found mutilated in a ditch by the side of the road. Upon examination, both the bodies in surrounding areas showed signs of a short firefight. No partisan bodies were recovered. The attackers either sustained no casualties or brought their dead with them. The brazenness of this attack is concerning. Location of the bodies was such that even if a call for reinforcements had been made, it would be highly unlikely that any other patrol would be able to reach the area in time, and the violence of the attack only serves to conceal its skill planning. I find it unlikely that the natives could effectively plan an attack such as this. I suspect there exists a dissident element within the German population funneling information to UNITA. An investigation is underway to determine the nature of this traitorous group. Do you think Aryans could advocate such brutality? Yeah, it's, it's time we do this focus, yeah. I think up next, though, what we want to do... Let's go ahead and do... Okay, so over here... Let's see. I kept a tally. I think overall that the silver... Well rules against the silver has like one more influence point, I would say. Against gather our strength. Even though I'd love to do both. I think overall... Oh my goodness. Fosh! Bad words. Um, that this one will do more just because we can co-op the natives or cover the boars. And then spark the uprisings. We will be... Able to disrupt the groups and hopefully completely destroy the rebels' leadership. So, there's just like one slightly one more uh, point of influence that the time is recording for us to do this one. Also, apparently, someone said that in the comments that like Britain had some sort of like commando units that they did the same thing against like was it Malaysia and Kenya in our timeline. But, anyways, Afrikaners in Botswana seek boat citizenship. Urgent from von Botswana, Karl Chemuski. In the recent weeks, a notable trend has begun to emerge in the border regions of the Botswana region and the Boer Republic. Prior to the annexation of Botswana by the Reichstag, the region was under control of South Africa and was home to tens of thousands of Afrikaner settlers. Many are currently prosperous farmers and merchants and are especially concentrated in the parts of Kalahari Desert. With the annexation, it would seem that many of these Botswana Afrikaners would prefer to leave the Boer Republic for the various political, social, and economic reasons. According to the Boer Ministry of Home Affairs, approximately 1,180 Botswana Afrikaners have crossed the border into the Republic in the past month and requested asylum pursuant to receive Boer citizenship. Of these, approximately 800 have been deported back into the Reichstag, or the remainder have been taken into temporary custody. This situation is untenable, with local police officials reporting that further attempts at migration are extremely likely. It is a recommendation of the Colonial Vavata von Botswana that the Boer Republic be forced to open the borders to the Botswana Afrikaners in order to relieve the situation. It's none of our business. Make them open the country. The Boers won't like that. Um, if it's going to go bad anyway, it's none of our business. Mutesa the second disposed by local warlord from the Nolte Bahoda von Uganda. As the central government of the Reichstag is well aware, Uganda is home to a number of traditional kingdoms and chiefdoms. Under our rule, they've been kept relatively complacent, but in the post annexation period, independent warlords have risen up to challenge the authority of these tribal authorities. These warlords often had, had experience as mercenaries or in Britain's former colonial army and command sizable forces. This has been most clearly demonstrated in a local conflict in the kingdom of Uganda. Idi Amin, a respected warlord from the northern regions of Uganda, has been leading a violent campaign south of Mu against Mutesa II, Kabaka king of Buganda. Yesterday, hundreds of his men led a daring raid of the royal compound of Mengo Palace near the city of Kampala. This was likely an attempt to capture and possibly execute the king, while Mutesa was able to escape with the help of our garrison. His prestige has been forever tarnished, and uh, Amin is widely considered to be the new dominant power in the former kingdom of Buganda. King's warlords are all savages in the end. Cut the rot out. Apart from the desk of Colonel Vavalta, Des Angola, Eric Musfeld. Suspicions of treason within the local German population has been verified. Following the massacre of the patrols outside Luanda, investigations were made into the past connections in the South African War recruits, but for the immigration from Germany. It was revealed that the, of the Luanda or Luanda garrison, a large proportion of the South African War recruits had maintained connections with university socialist groups during the Burger Creek. It is likely that they were sent here primarily to remove the corrupting influence from the polite German society with their competency and battle a secondary concern. With this knowledge, it was a simple task to determine which of these men had maintained unauthorized contact with the natives, and interrogation revealed a small clique actively funneling information to UNITA itself. Once the clique was identified, all Gerson members with socialist backgrounds were detained and ex executed in short order. I have full confidence that this group eliminated, UNITA's capabilities in the field will drastically decrease and order will be restored shortly. Will, will we never be free of the partisan Bolshevism? Or the parasite? 
A report on emergence of resistance group in Kenya, from the desk of Colonel Bavata, Kenya Maximilian Grabner. Dissidents' voices have a long history in Kenya, back in 47, when the administration had not yet solidified. The same dissidents, who we now know as the Kea, established an organization called the Lua Thrift and Trading Corporation, a private company run by Oginga Odinga himself. The purpose of this corporation was to advance the ethnic interests of the Luo tribes, assisting them in establishing businesses and offering financial and technical advice. The corporation was shut down by an SS raid in 1949, where Aryan control, con or Aryan control over Kenya was tightened, but we have received word that it is now active again, operating in secret inside the region's black market. Between the chaos sovereignty decree, the Luo, Luo brigades, and now the emergence of this nationalist organization, it has become apparent that the time for our trap to be strung sprung is now. The suspected HQ of the Luo Thrift and Trading Corporation will be raided in days ahead and will be known sites of the congregation of the previously established Lua brigades. In one fell swoop, the SS in Kenya will purge the territory of those savages that will dare snarl at their hands. Let it be. Shut them down. Um, Kenya, yes. let it be. No, you, you, you got you to snuff them out. You absolutely have to go ahead and snuff them out. A hundred cuts. A report from the desk of Colonial Bavata cuts France urgent. Ugandish rebels and soldiers alike have been continuously attacking military bases here as of late. I'm unsure how long this has been going on, but the first report of these incidents came a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. I can only assume that this is due to the state of leadership up in Uganda. While we have sent out more men to better fend off these attacks or supply lines, and indeed many of our settlement reinforcements have been attacked by Rwandish militias. The greatest attack so far happened a few days ago. Supply trains were looted en masse, and the massive offensive on our base claimed at least 2,000. I do believe these two events were coordinated. They happened on the same day. It's impossible to not see the connection. Thus, I must recommend that you send more men and supplies to Rwanda Urundi to supply the local garrison. We must strengthen our defenses against these dual threats. Request approved. Request 100% approved. Emptying the countryside. Pushing the pedal to the metal. Driving through the flames. Standarten für Schmidt was currently in the most desperate situation in his entire life, and the only person he had to blame was himself. It was a simple job. Arrive at the designated location. Locate and neutralize the threat, and then move away. And for the first two steps, it went fine until Hans didn't realize that one of the targets he just hit was standing over several barrels of kerosene with a lit torch. In a moment, the flash filled the entire room, followed by a massive, deafening conflict. Conflagration. It was a miracle that the explosion just pushed me out, out of the building, thought Schmidt. If I stayed inside that rickety, rickety hangar, I would have died within a collapse. After a moment of confusion, Schmidt realized that the fire was expanding to the fields surrounding the now ruined hangar, so he and the few units under his command still ran alive over the truck and raced as fast as they could from the fire. When the trucks got out of the jungle, Schmidt realized that the situation was much worse than he imagined. The fire expanded to, the entire, to cover the entire vegetation, orange tongues fluttering in the night sky. And the heat could be felt even while standing far from the fire, but... At least he didn't have to report that the Repo rebels got away once again, thought Schmidt. Uh, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, it's time to look at how we're doing. We're still uneasy here, so let's not good uneasy. Uh, oh, but we're pretty good over here. I think we can do one more focus and then go back and improve the situation a little bit more. Because we have enough political power, we have enough command power, so if one or maybe even two states get out of hand, we can still do relatively okay. Stability goes down, even more stability, but I gave more stability. Ooh, we, I, if I'm going to do Burgundian system... And I'm going to do camp equalization right immediately after it as well, so. I think for now we're going to do wolves against the silver, just in case. There's no organization more suited in the world of putting down and pacifying civilian populations than the SS, as luck would have it. We have a sizable detachment of outcast SS men at our disposal. As well past time, we put these men doing to work doing what they do best. By organizing our men into small and mobile battalions, we can loose them into the countryside to pacify as they see fit. By giving the units the autonomy and flexibility that they need to act independently from our headquarters, our men will have the freedom they need to put down our enemies quickly and properly. We will wake up the werewolf, honestly. Why don't we should have just sent Delvanga, Delvanga's brigade down into Africa? That would have probably been really okay to do then. <laughs> uh, requesting Delvanga, please. Uh, and actually, you know what? Even though we're putting down a few people here and there, our budget, our debt, our GDP. Hans Hutek is a genius. Rebel militia spotted near the shores of the Congo Sea. From the desk of the colonel of Avata von Ubangishari, Arthur. Arthur. Levens, uh, Levens shell. The rebel situation in Ubangishar region has escalated while there have been no more fatalities from rebel attacks. There have been several German soldiers wounded. In addition, three local informants were found murdered on the outskirts of Beotlerstadt. Beotlerstadt, near the shores of the Congo Sea. These informants have notified garrison authorities that were rebel militias active in the area and that their influence and capabilities were only growing stronger. It is the recommendation of the colony of Avata that the central government authorize more funding, resources, and manpower to combat this rebel threat. Stamp them out. We cannot spell the. Uh, no, we'll go stamp them out. Stamp them out. Nope. We must stamp them out. It matters not what happens, but we must get rid of them. Hey, we're stage two, though, which is actually really, really nice. Even though um, devastation, monthly population goes down, damage to garrisons actually has lessened. It's still, you know, where it shouldn't be, but it's actually lessened. So, not bad. 
And obviously this video is a very long video. Or just longer to me just because we're doing the best we can here. Actually, the color changed, I think, here too for uh, Gross Avocado and Actually, I thought it was slightly more green earlier, so. Rebel militia in Congo arrested near Bangui. From the desk of Colonel Vavata von Ubangi Shari Alta live in Hazen Tarba Harda de Shell. I say his name perfectly. Our efforts against the local rebel forces in the Ubangi Shari region have borne fruit last night. A large contingent of troops from the Bailerstadt ba garrison conducted a raid on a suspected rebel camp near the town of Damara. The rebels never saw us coming, and the area was secured with hardly any shots fired. Hundreds of rebels, mostly of Azandi origin, were arrested by our forces. Our intention is to have them transferred to the nearest rebel camp indefinitely. Meanwhile, the leader, a foolish few, a few foolish mercenary ex Central Afrikanischen SS officers have been taken into custody separately. Our intention is to have them, these upstarts dogs liquidated. Very, very good. And it puts a smile on my face, even though Zimbabwe is starting to fall apart a little bit more and more. So, 90% Cameroon. I think at this point, yeah, we can do another one after this. Chaos on the railway. Reports from the desk of Colonel Bavata Rakaz Bear. Bombings have been reported along sections of the critical Salisbury Quilimane line. Critical shipments of supplies destined for Zimbabwe Gelson will now have to be delayed. Furthermore, at least one train seems to have been derailed as the aforementioned bombings were taking place. Where, uh, while I've dispatched teams to assist the survivors and safeguard the remaining supplies, it's probable that the Black Savages have and are stealing supplies as you are reading this. If preliminary reports are to be believed, these attacks seem to be premediated. As the primary function of this railway is to transport supplies to the troop station here. It is not a normal terror attack. Thus, we must strengthen our patrols along the rail before anything else. Further, we must also increase counterinsurgency operations so that we so that these attacks may cease. If they continue, our rule in Zimbabwe will almost certainly collapse. Gosh darn it, send more equipment. Crackdown in Kenya unsuccessful. From Kenya, basically. The general state of old in Kenya has found a rapidly decline. Tensions have been heightening for far too long, and our measures to crack down on Odinga's, Odinga's Luo Threat and Trading Corporation they appear to have been the last straw for the local rebels. Our intelligence on the location of the corporation's nexus was wrong, but our attempted raid and the successful capture of some known members of the Luo Brigade was enough to trigger a stronger response from the native resistance. A separatist pirate radio station popular with the Untermension have made a disturbing edict announcing the formation of the popular government for sovereignty, a pretense to a sovereign state, led by Kea o Odinga, Odinga, and a compatriot and don't separatist, Aking Wanko. Oh, the Lua brigades have apparently greatly bolstered in number under our noses, and a swell of ethnic nationalism has taken away, taken a sway over the Luo people under the leadership of the Kea. Open dissidence is becoming more and more common by the day, and popular resistance to Aryan domination is at an all-time high in the territory. Regrettably, it, is, it seems the days of the absolute right shot control of the corner of Kenya is at least temporarily at an end. The Luo will be republished in time. R. Breakdown of border. Report from the desk of Colonia Bavata des Angola Eric Musfeld. Efforts to curb the violent tendencies of the native population have failed. Unity's call to arms ha has deeply affected the mood of the Angolans, and violent encounters between Germans and natives are becoming all the more common, even within the area previously thought safe, up to and including the city of Luanda itself, where the garrison is currently performing a cleansing operation in the slums. Natives have somehow managed acquired stashes of ex-Portuguese weapons, which, while of low quality, are sufficient quality to tie up troops across the colony. I'm becoming increasingly worried of the capability of the garrison to deal with the natives suddenly or sudden revolutionary tendency, and we should formally request support from the Congo garrison that we might regain the initiative against this unusually well-coordinated series of attacks. If immediate assistance is not provided, I fear for the ability of the garrison to control the entirety of the colony. The other regions may have to be sacrificed to native control in order to maintain the control of the coast. Please advise. Send in reinforcements. Send in reinforcements. How many millions live here in different parts of Africa? Man, that's a lot of people to liquidate. Holy crap. But, you know what? You gotta start somewhere. Empty the continent? Sure. To combat revolutions that are bringing our nation to its knees, the entire continent must be completely monitored, no matter what the cost. Now that the extent of our operations span the entire continent, it's time to destroy the remaining threats to rule. Our units must work day and night to capture the degenerates. The jungle will be searched down to a single blade of grass. The camps must be expanded for new laborers, and quotas raised to even greater levels. The future of Aaron Nation in Africa depends on our success. A German werewolf in Africa. Hutig's eyed the map in front of him and felt like a head headache growing behind his eyes. The red marks that indicated boxes or areas of rebel control had spread like chickenpox, and no amount of scratching by the garrison had destroyed the infection. They had attempted countless remedies from scorched earth to air aerial raids, but nothing seemed to extend their expansion. There was another option, one he'd been reluctant to implement considering its debatable effectiveness in the past, but now it seemed like he had little choice. The werewolf uh, had seemed an excellent idea in the South African War, an ide a force of ideologically driven, devoted citizens, trained only to inflict havoc against the enemy behind the front lines. They distributed explosives and provided SS training, and even provided valuable off-road vehicles that could perform hit-and-run raids against the OFM. They had perhaps underestimated their enthusiasm. The werewolf uh, had been more concerned with settling scores and 
with any offensives of strategic value. More often than not, the attacks they conducted were against the same native populations that they were trying to maintain control over. The settlers were eager to assert their control over the land they considered theirs, driving the locals out with fire and sword straight into the arms of the OFM, who frequently simply armed them and sent them straight back. Now, however, a bit of crusading zeal might just be what they needed. Hutig rubbed his eyes and picked up his phone. They may be dudes, but there are dudes. Look at this. The organization's operations are often behind the enemy lines. These types of operations are very risky and quite often run end up often ends up by great losses of both men and precious equipment. However, if successful, it would be very effective, even proving able to entirely disrupt a brewing revolt. To unlock actions, you need to invest further time to expanding via foci. These actions will allow you to gather equipment and men at the end to launch operations on the continent. 550, 1,000. Not bad. But uneasy, 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 worsening, uneasy. Oh boy. Not good. For the GDP, not bad. Oh, man. There's so much reading this one. Whew. And which is not bad. I mean, that's why you sign up for play and watch TNO, so. Russia is, I'd say, on a, on a precipice, but we'll see what happens. China. What's China up to? Kind of happy. Guao Zong Wu. Okay. And what's going on in America? LBJ doing for those worthy. Expanded safety nets. All right. Whites only, huh? Hmm. Expanded safety nets, of course. Economic opportunity. This is very weird. We go from like reading like four events a day into reading like nothing for a while. Ugandasha insurgency in Kampala. From the note uh, Behold von Uganda. The ongoing fight against the bandits, warlords, and guerrillas in the Uganda region has entered a new phase, according to a garrison. Over the past three weeks, no fewer than four attacks on German soldiers stationed in the city of Kampala have been perpetrated, resulting in three deaths and 11 injuries. Two of these injuries were so dire as, it ne as to necessitate evacuation to Quilame for emergency treatment. Our sources within the population of Kampala have indicated that a new urban guerrilla group, the Ganda Army of Popular Liberation, is most likely responsible for these attacks. The individual attackers, while relatively few in number, have proved difficult to identify. After every attack, they flee into the shanty towns and alleyways of Kampala, with the suspected support of local communities. We recommend that the central government authorize immediate retaliation. Can't afford anything? We're going straight in, boys. Shootouts in the mines. Urgent. From the ports of the desk of Colonia Bavata, Wakad Baya. The Madziba mines are in chaos today as Zimbabwean forces, rebel forces, have engaged a guard station there. Early this morning, thousands of rebels surrounded the mines, demanding our surrender. After seven hours of relentless fighting, the guards managed to repel them from the mines, although they have suffered ins they have suffered significant casualties in the process. The advantageous advantageous position saved them, although should the mines come under further attack, it might it is almost certain that they will fall into rebel hands. More supplies and reinforcements must be sent to Zimbabwe in order to safeguard the cities and critical resource centers such as the mines. We cannot afford to cut back on support. If we do, our rule will collapse into anarchy. More rebels and attacks are coming. We must stop them no matter what the cost. More men. When in doubt, more men. More, more, more. And is it catastrophic in Zimbabwe? That is really not good. Hmm. Stage two. Um, I, Zimbabwe is like here-ish. Uh, Zimbabish, yeah. Lusaka. Harar is definitely Zimbabwe. So. Unrest in Zimbabwe. Mashallah, that was distressing news. The guests on station in Zimbabwe region were unable to respond to respect repeated communication attempts. Um, Let's see. Well, this is mostly the same thing as we saw about Uganda, but, you know, this group that that's hurting us, um, as known as Zanu by intelligence, have forced our hand requiring us to divert our efforts to quell quelling this racket rather than pursuing our intended objectives. With that being said, however, we cannot neglect them, thus to grow further out of control, and manage to secure a grip on their ill-gained territories, eventually declaring themselves a separate entity. Uh, with all that in mind, we hope that this report reaches you halutic with and with swiftness. May you successfully do with the resistance. It's pretty much exactly the same thing, except it's now Zanu and Zimbabwe, so. We have 90 days. We must act now. Go in. Even though we need more political power for this, too. Emptying the continent. The sun was sitting over the savannah, the tall grass swaying with the breeze, the mellow orange giving way to blue as the day turned to an end. Not a single creature could be found in the fields except for a group of ragged German soldiers camping under a tree, their helicopter not too far from them. Mine Rao was sick of flying across the savannah for weeks without fi finding any sign of civilization. The last resupply was three weeks ago, and it was the t last time him and his company ever saw other people. Was this some sort of elaborate punishment for a crime I didn't even commit? HQ somehow couldn't find a good excuse for putting me in front of an execution squad, so they sent me wandering across the wilderness for the rest of my days. Mine Rao couldn't find an answer to these questions, and while part of his brain tried to shrug him off as paranoid, but it's only made him more restless. 
Monrad felt that saying still would only make things worse, so with the exclusive going for a leak, he climbed above a large rock right next to an encampment so they could have a view of the savannah. Upon his gaze fell upon the empty grassy expanse, Monrad suddenly realized that he never saw an animal during his patrols. He never saw any natives, but that was normal given his submission. However, not a single wild animal came across the site. Not a majestic lion, not a swift gazelle, not even a mean little rat or a snake appeared during his trips. It was almost as if nature herself was avoiding Monrad and his team, leaving him alone in the vast emptiness of the savannah. With this realization, Monrad cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted, Hello? His garment, startled by the sudden noise, rushed to Minrad. His captain grabbed his uniform and shouted, What are you shouting for, you maniac? What if the enemy notices you? Minrad, non plussed, simply replied, What are you talking about, Captain? The savannah fell once again into silence when Minrad added, There's nobody here except us. When they make a desert, they call it peace. So even this is not great. 95, that's not bad. Uh, Zimbabwe is really, really bad, though. If we can get Zimbabwe fixed, then we should do relatively okay, but uh, we'll see. Radio silence, reports from communications office, urgent. Communications with Kigali have been lost today. We have no idea what exactly happened. However, the last reports over the hours have been extremely worrying. Uh, Colonial of Abata Franz reports that Ugandish militias are destroying the radio towers and all means of communication. This comes as a surprise to us. Kigali was very well defended. However, in his last communication to us, the Colonial of Abata informed us that he would simply be moving operations to Gitika. The city remains secure against attack for now, and he can make contact with Quilomane there. For now, we have limited information on what's happening in Rwanda. Yeah, this is starting to worry me a little bit more. Oh, it's going by point... Uh... 0.3. Oh my gosh. Oh, things are going faster now. Oh, we emptied the continent. That's right. That's good. Um, I might do this immediately, actually. You know what? We're going to do this immediately. As much as I'd love to do this stuff, whatever, we're going to do this one and then go Burgundian system, cap equalization for more political power and stability. Find the leaders. Our soldiers are getting discouraged at the prospect of pacifying the territory under our control, given the quality of rebel attacks or rebel groups to attract. But they have one thing in common, namely, if you cut the head of the group, they can become an untrained rebel. Finding and neutralizing the leaders of the rebel groups must become our top priority if we want to stabilize Africa, and the efficiency and ruthlessness of our SS divisions will bring down the degenerate natives and their fanciful plans. New evidence discovered against Schenk. Uh, what? Okay, some from the uh, desk of Colonia Babata, Namibia, Carl Friedrich Hooker. Find attached alongside his missive, conclusive proof of our long standing suspicions about the snake, Wolfgang Schenk's misdeeds. Locked away in far corners of Windhoek, they discovered records of both communications with and even illicit materials support given to rebel organizations like UNITA and MPLA. Many of the documents bear Schenk's own signature, and included in the documents will be found first hand reports of Schenk's apertures. Our betters. Secretaries and underlings that assisted in Shake's crimes or who are willing to cooperate with an investigation in exchange for a letter of punishments. Accordingly, it is recommended that they all be shot rather than interned. These discoveries both close the case on Shank and explain the arbit arborently emboldened nature of resistance elements in Sudbest Africa. Thus, always the traitors. At least Namibia is better. It's acceptable, but that's starting to worry me a little bit more. So, it goes from 39.6 to 44.6. We could definitely use more political power now. Good lord. Yeah, we definitely got to find more leaders. And we got to get more stability, because this is what hurts our stability. Stability hurts our political power. Garrisons. Production. Battlefall of Victoria C. Oh, crap. The economy of Uganda is largely based around the production of agricultural goods for export, both within the Reichstag and, at least to an extent, abroad. One critical juncture of this economy is the trade, trade across the Victoria Sea, the vast tropical lake whose shores touch many regions of the Reichstag, along with Italian East Africa. Now, that juncture is being threatened. The warlords which have threatened Uganda's traditional kingdoms and chiefdoms have turned the gates to Uganda's ports. Reports have come on come of ongoing battles between various factions in the coastal towns of Jinja and Tebe and Namulanda. This fighting has disrupted local commerce and claimed dozens of lives so far, with the garrison primarily concentrated in Kampala. It's unlikely that these classes will end anytime soon. Mustn't the coffee flow, though? God dang it. They're still uneasy, and the influence of the dangerous of the ANC is dangerous. Oh, crap. That's worrying, too. Worsening. Why is it going down so fast now, though? Okay. Actually, can we send nothing up there yet? That's fine. Uh, that's not good. Freliga leader Eduardo Mondlane arrested from Deputy Halt. Uh, Stadthalter SS Paul Werner Hopper to Hantutet, Operation against Freilager. I am pleased to inform you that Stadthalter SS of the capture of known Freilager leader Owado Mondlane who was being held in detention at KL594. We expect he will bring you much required information about their operation in Freilager in Mozambique. We have kept this location a secret and expect the organization to fracture after the loss of its leader. I will update the Reichswehr SS on any further developments. Hi, Hutig. Thousands of Svalo dissidents arrested. On investigations into Sam Nujoma's victory parade through Windhoek during the Svavo's brief occupation of the city have been concluded. 
Through their always efficient means of intelligence gathering, the SSS incarcerated and interrogated hundreds upon hundreds of participants in these rallies, each of whom has either confessed to their crimes personally or been found guilty by either photographic evidence or eyewitness accounts. Combined with the numerous casualties followed undertook in their arrival and the subsequent eviction from Windhoek, it is, it is likely that the permanent detention of these supporters and avatars will uproot both this follow organization itself and any support it might have won among the early swayed minds of the savages. The concentration camps nearest to Windhoek have all been alerted to the impending new residents about to arrive in their communities. Olda is insured in Namibia? Well, I'm glad we have it in areas that really need it, but right now... Okay, we're uneasy, still there. Rwanda, Urundi, Urundi, Rwanda, Wahaba. Oh, we can get this... We actually might be able to get up here, too. Because it's worsening, this is worsening, but... Good. We don't have that much command power left. Rooting out the rebels. Okay, so now it's all uneasy. That's not bad. Reports of altercation. Formal Central African Territories, North Congo Lake. My team was sent to scout one of the several trails above the North Congo Lake. Muller had not fully documented the area, so it was unknown what would lie at the end. Resistance was unexpected, but nonetheless, we brought sufficient weapons and munitions with us in the event that we were to encounter any hostile natives in the area. If that had happened, it would have been simple to neutralize them. Unfortunately, we, we were beset upon not only by disgruntled natives, but the, by the remnants of Muller's mongrel SS. They were well-armed, well-trained, and assisted by Belgian traders. We had little time to respond when they launched their surprise attack, and a significant portion of my team was killed before we, uh, we, before we were able to return fire. After it became clear that there was no chance that we would win or achieve victory, I gave the order for the brigade to treat. In total, 11 out of the 24 men that were assigned to the unit were killed in action and two more were wounded by enemy fire. I recommend sending out several brigades as they have the numbers and arms to be any single unit with their hands behind their backs. Heavy equipment will not be recommended as the roads are too poorly made and thin to carry such things. An unsatisfactory performance. And now we're going to go to the Burgundian system and then camp equalization to get this done as fast as possible. Burgundy might have the right idea, but its methods are revisionist. What if the Oldenstadt's talk of an Aryan future worth if Himmler stoops down to the level of enlisting Frenchmen and Belgians? They might as well be Mueller for all I care. Even the SS de Jura pretending their status gives them a higher placement in the racial hierarchy than other Aryans. In the Reichstadt, however, things will be different. I will make sure that Himmler will learn from me. Once I am finished with this continent, its inhabitants will be more Burgundian than the Burgundians themselves. Good. What if we can appeal to Himmler for uh, more soldiers? You know what I would really love to see? I would absolutely love to see uh, someone make a sub mod so that the Reichstadt, this big old African state, could like survive. That'd be really cool. Explosion in the Luanda Colonialamt. Colonialamt. Gentlemen, now that we're all here, let's begin the meeting. Erich announced as Frig F Siegfried Hansen, the liaison from Quillemaine, exited the bathroom and took a seat. I'm hearing that you are having trouble putting down subhuman savages. Would any of you like to care or explain why? Or why should I just send a lot of you to the camps right now? That dude Shank was too soft on this savages, piped up one of the ambassador uh, assembled garrison commanders. It's no surprise that the own to mention react more fiercely against proper Aryan rule. Well then, let's redouble our efforts. More troops, harsher crackdowns. Unfortunately, we're running low on manpower and Quillemaine still hasn't reported or responded to our last request for more troops. The meeting continued likewise, with Eric and the assembled commanders sharing various curses at their Bellus natives, the Churchill's shank, and the cowards in Germania. The atmosphere was so heated that almost no one took notice of secret's departure from the room to take a call from the capital. What everyone did notice, however, was an explosion emanating from the suitcase Siegfried left under the table. An explosive conclusion. Oh, of course, Siegfried. Was it supposed to be Operation Siegfried? Hmm. Oh, was it Operation Val Valkyrie? Yeah, Operation Valkyrie. Oof. So... We got it up to, like, uneasy, right? Zimbabwe, yeah. So when does this cancel? Oh, we gotta get troops around here. Uh, Quillamane. I don't want to do this, but... One, two... Heirs of Babylon. Oh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. This happens every campaign, so what a childish fantasy. Happy 1968, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. 62%, 55, 63, 62, 61. Monlane Strial from Deputy Stahel SS pa Paul Werner Hopper to Hans Hutig. And today, the leader of the G Gaza Land Liberation Front, Eduardo Mondelein, has been subjected to a trial in the Quillemaine Corrective Camp after swift interrogation. He was found guilty of all charges against the Reichstadt, terrorist activity, high treason against the German Reich, and anti-Nazi thought. The sentence is death by hanging and will be carried out in the following days. However, if I might point out, it would be much safer to simply execute Mondelein right after the sentence was delivered, since leaving him alive might push his comrades to action. Nevertheless, the Quillemaine Corrective Camp is a top-notch in terms of security, so the worst-case scenario is unlikely to happen. Heil Hutig. One of the serious worries worry about panic in, in Lupin. Report from the desk of Colonial Vavance, Ricard Baer. An important member of the Lupin City administration has gone missing. After a day and no clue about of, of his whereabouts, we have concluded that he has been abducted by the insurgents. Under normal circumstances, we would be able to handle such cases, but these are not normal circumstances. I understand that our resources are stretched thin in these tumultuous times. However, I must ask you once more to send additional funding to Zimbabwe. We do not need men, just money. If we receive this aid, we might be able to find the administrator and ensure safety. If our control over Zimbabwe is to be preserved, any control we might have right now will be crucial in the weeks ahead. Once more, I'm asking you to send aid. 
Once more, I'm asking for your financial assistance. Anything would go an extremely long way to defeating the rebels. Send as much as possible. He can have it. So, once we have enough garrisons here... Do we have six divisions here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, there we go. And now it's blue. In one of the states. Do we have to put literally all these guys in one state? Um, that's fine with me. I don't care. There you go. Go right there. And Zimbabwe secure. Uh, if you like to read about this one, it's just we secure it. Vundaba is basically the same thing as that last time, so. Okay, so they all have to be in exactly one state. Cool. They're secured for now, but it's not going to be secured for a long, 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 long time, probably. <sighs> good. Uh, Mon Lane manages. Wait, what? He managed to escape. Our good to that Shaw had the SS. The contact with KL594 was lost at 5.05 a.m. yesterday morning. Subsequently, a dispatch patrol from SS Division Lova to investigate the cause of the communications outage. Obersturm von Führer. Lutzmann's report attached below details the state in which the KL594 was found. Free Liga's admission of his responsibility for the attack suggested the purpose of the of KL-594's destruction was to free Mondlane, which was not amongst the dead. I have ordered the liquidation of the villages of E-56 and E-1002 and retribution for the attack as per the guidelines stipulated in Circular F-9. Furthermore, a search mission to find Mondlane is underway, but difficulties are being encountered due to increased Friga, Free Liga activity. Hi, Hutig. Chaos in Luanda. With ringing ears, Air shoved the collapsed table off of his legs and staggered to his feet. All around him were garrison commanders doing the same. The next mo thing he was aware of was the blaring of the Luanda emergency siren, followed by the muffled shouting of the colonial, colonial lumped gods as they rushed into the room, nearly stumbling over the wooden rubble that littered the floor. Right, sir, are you wounded? Eric heard the nearest god, ringing, finally ringing, starting to die down. My body's bruised, my pants are scorched, but the dude's mission failed. I'm still standing. A change of pants will have to wait, sir, until United's launch an attack on the city. Those dogs, why haven't they been slaughtered yet? There's too many of them. Our forces are being overrun all over to Luanda. We have to evacuate you and the surviving garrison commanders to a nearby town. Retreat before these animals and urgent an urge to seize a man's gun and shoot him dead for even suggesting just what inside Eric's mind, but the sound of gunfire and explosions outside convinced him that perhaps it was best to practice practice the better part of valor. Send even more men? Uh let's see, Angola. It's uneasy? 65. Eh, it didn't hurt us that much, so. It seems like we... To make sure we don't collapse as fast as possible. It seems like we probably just have to use console commands. Oh, come on. Just a week left. Come on. Which I do want to do camp equalization, but let's get this one first, because we want as much political power as possible, right? Nice. And we will finish with camp equalization. We new general guidelines for the SS Concentrations Lagal Trupa. For the extra purpose of aeronizing Africa to be to be realized, it is necessary that each member of the SS understand that he is not to engage in militaristic materialistic decadence. This must be upheld on the Concentrations Lagal more than anywhere else. There must be no degeneracy permitted. All SS personnel must refuse luxuries if there are to be any moral consistency in us detaining Aryans due to degenerate behavior. It must be clear that all Aryans are equal and should be treated equally. Degeneracy is not as allowed for no one for none of us. Men of the SS Concentrations Lagal Trupa must live a life no more luxurious. That of the inter internees. Now, so that'll help us out because now we're looking at a crap ton of negative stability. Wow, that's so bad. I think this is what we have to do to get at least a little bit more stability back. Um, let's see, Apocalypse system, not bad. By doing this, we get plus 35%, so we really get 25% more political power or stability mean. So that'll definitely help us out here. Get more political power. We actually get one a day, which is actually pretty good, but a new African dom. Crack, crack, crack. Blood and howls of the African flew through the air as the German's whip continued to sear through the slave's flesh, whilst the Rexcom saw steely gaze continued to peer on, while the traitor's slave contemporaries looked onwards with cries and tears. Insubordination, treachery, conspiracy against the Reichstadt, and for them all, the Rexcom saw himself. It can hardly believe it that after the destruction of Siegfried Müller's incompetence and Wolfgang Schenk's lack of will to act, these venomous lands continued to defy the will of Hans Hutig, the very will of the Reich itself, before he arrived at the post. Africa was a sullen mess of inferiority, mismanagement, and resistance against the Aryan way. National Socialism was meant to change these ways, purge these terrible jungles from the gross and decadent ways. And yet, National Socialism has failed. These African dudes haven't just refused to give in. They've gone a step further and have dared to refuse the will of Han Hutig in his own camp. National Daddyism provided not the miracle that would cleave this continent asunder and provide for a greater world by the might of the Aryan. However, what it did provide was a vision. A vision for things to come, for what the Reichstag needed to breathe life into these terrible days so that all tears may find only a painful death and that only the pure and strong may survive. Every man enlisted, every citizen under surveillance, and every enemy of the Reichstag upon the cross. Reichskumasa Hutig took a few steps forwards, grabbing an assault rifle and putting, pulling back the charging handle as his boots kicked up the sands of all Africa. Summary execution, all of them. The Rex Kumasa said, such words only boil several minutes of butchery and bloodshed across those terrible sands. Where they failed, we shall survive, but I hope you enjoyed this little bit longer video.
If you did, I really do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we have more fun in Africa and try our best to not collapse, including the Boer Republic. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.